four element quad is working. It's uh, it's always been one of my favorite uh, antennas. I know I uh, can't remember the name of the company, but there was a company in California that built the uh, excuse me that built that quad. Uh, I think they're still. Yeah, middle of the night, and there's still a little bit of skip coming in. This radio has extra channels. You'll notice there's no phone jack. Someone has a crystal board in this. There's even some people down in the lower channel a little while ago. But, uh... But, uh, in any case, customer sent this one in to have it uh, completely gone through. So, basically, just uh, replace the electrolytic capacitors, do an alignment. Now, he did note that when you were changing bands, um, like I say, this has one of those little circuit boards. I'll show you when I flip the radio up with uh, three crystals on it. One of the crystals is the original crystal out of the radio that gets transferred over to the switchboard. And then you just run a pair of wires over the circuit board. Um... But he had noted when you change bands, sometimes the radio would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Um, and that's exactly what was happening. Uh, first thing was, very poor installation of that <laughs> switchboard. Um, the wires they had going from it over, back over to you know the uh, holes in the circuit board where the original crystal was run. Some teeny, tiny little small wires. And just way too much excessive wire. Uh, anytime you do something like that, you want to try and keep your lead length as short as possible. So you have you know, a little bit of loss, because every inch of wire you add, you're adding loss to the signal. Um, and also chances of other signals being able to be you know induced in, into that uh, frequency. So try and keep that as short as possible. Um, the other thing, and I, I think was probably his main problem was, was actually the clarifier. Uh... I don't know, <laughs> and this, I guess you could call this a tip. So if you ever have a radio that has, and it doesn't necessarily even have to have extra, extra, you know, bands in it, like this has uh, 40 up and 40 down, um, doesn't necessarily have to be even anything like this. If you've got where channels just, you get to a certain point either going up or down in channels, and it unlocks, the PLL unlocks, and an easy way to tell that is um, if you key your microphone you know, changing channels, and then all of a sudden it stops transmitting. And it won't transmit anywhere higher up or down, depending which end is uh, you're having a problem with. Now, that could be as simple as the VCO voltage is not set properly. But, uh, the I, like I said, I honestly think it was the clarifier modification someone did in this. For starters, when you unlock the clarifier, what you're doing, a, a factory CB radio... Um, has what is known as a locked clarifier. So the receive channel is adjusted with the clarifier. The transmit channel, or the not channel, but the transmit frequency is supposed to be adjusted internally inside the radio by me or someone else, you know, when they're actually doing a transceiver alignment on the radio. So when you, the user, are using the radio, when you turn the clarifier, you're only changing your receive frequency. Your transmit frequency is hard set inside with another potentiometer. Actually, it's just a little small trimmer pot inside. What you do when you unlock it is you're actually simplifying the circuit because the way the circuits are set up as they are, they have two separate, basically, clarifiers. The one on the outside for receive and the one that I would adjust on the inside. When you unlock the clarifier, you get rid of that switching circuit and everything's just... At, whatever you're receiving on is the same frequency you're going to be transmitting on greatly simplifies the circuit. But what you need to do is, or what actually happens inside of a radio is, the voltage source is switched off to the clarifier when you're in transmit and has voltage going to it when it's in receive. It switches back and forth between those two circuits, between the internally adjusted or the externally adjusted one. And you're basically eliminating that internal circuit and making the external clarifier the one that's in operation full time. Um, so you need to, for starters, you need to supply a continuous voltage source. 
to one terminal of it. So there's three terminals on a potentiometer. Um, the center one will usually be the one that's actually the control or the output voltage from the clarifier circuit that actually is adjusting the frequency. You'll have one goes to voltage source and one that goes to ground. Now, they had the voltage source for starters picking up from a really oddball place in here that was, in my opinion, was probably too low of a voltage to start with. To make matters even worse, the ground wire, someone didn't seem to realize that this and this and this and you know, transformer housing, any of this solid metal you see around here, that's not ground. <laughs> uh, that's chassis ground. Chassis ground and DC ground are two different things. Uh, the only thing that interconnects these big pieces of metal in this chassis to the actual ground plane on this circuit board here are some uh, ceramic capacitors along the outside edge, usually wherever the mounting screws are. And that's it. Or in this case, they actually have some little solder tabs. There's little punch outs right here. I have a little finger on the other underside. And there's, there'll just be a piece of wire that solders between here to here, here to here, around, around the board. And then there's a small pad there, and then there's a ceramic capacitor that bridges between there and the actual DC ground. Well, someone had the uh, ground that should have been going from the clarifier to DC ground, or the ground on the radio chassis, or the radio, the DC ground on the circuit board. They had it run to the steel chassis. <laughs> so, yeah, I... I honestly, I'm not even sure how in the hell this thing was working, to tell you the truth. Um, the clarifier range was really tiny, and like I say, it, you get, it just, it had this radio all screwed up. Um, this had definitely also been a screw turner radio, someone with their golden, golden screwdriver. They had the uh, power supply voltage set at about 18 point, like one or two volts. Way too much voltage, of course. Uh, it's supposed to be operating at 13.8. Um, I got the coils pretty much straightened out here, and I did have to tweak them a little bit to get the, uh, along, along with the uh, trap coil here to get the uh, second harmonic frequency down. But they had these coils just spread as far apart as they could get them. Um, court, now, surprisingly, they didn't clip the ALC or AMC limiters. Now, they did have the, the pots turned full, you know, at full rotation, so it was hor horribly over-modulated, but they had not disabled them, so, you know, no repairs needed there. It was just a matter of properly adjusting them. But, uh, like I say, once I got the clarifier circuit straightened out and ran a new piece of heavier wire um, to here, it worked fine. Now, for starters, don't use coax cable for this. Uh, I personally learned that the hard way years ago. <laughs> Someone sent me one of those little switchboards to install on a radio a long time ago. Um, and I installed it, and I assumed, well, we'll use a piece of coax. And Well, that was the wrong decision I found out. You just get your hand close to that coax and the frequency would change drastically. I mean, you could you could almost change 40 channels just by doing this. Between touching it and getting out to like this far away, you could you could actually change frequency like 40 channels. That's because the on those crystals, the crystal on one side and some radios one end of the crystal may go to ground. Well, this one, you know, it's there are components in circuit on either side of that crystal, so you really don't want to be using a piece of coax wrapped around the other wire, <laughs> and because the outside one then almost kind of acts like an antenna or you know capacitor or an inductor, you're just doing all kinds of weird things to the circuit. So yeah, just regular you know parallel run wire, you know side by side is what should be used when you're using those little switchboards down there. Now this right here, this is I need to zip tie this up, but this is actually the uh, headphone jack that was down there with a switchboard. Now, someone else had it just in a, a plastic, like a sandwich bag with like two wraps of scotch tape around it, and it was uh, pretty much all the terminals over the years, I guess, had punched holes through it, so I've put it inside of a piece of heat, yes, that's heat shrink tubing. <laughs> really big heat shrink tubing, but heat shrink tubing nonetheless. Um, a lot of people don't realize it. You can get, right, reach down here and grab it. This is actually <laughs> what that what that started out life as so yeah you can get heat shrink tubing i've got other other pieces here you can get this shit really big 
you know, heat shrink tubing big enough you can put your whole hand in. <laughs> uh, but uh, I like using stuff like this you know, to completely isolate stuff. That way there's no, absolutely no chance of any of the terminals poking holes through this and shorting out. So like I say, I'll get that actually zip tied before I button the radio up. But it does fit in rather nicely behind here, behind the speaker. But uh, I'll honestly, I'll probably what I'll do is I'll I'll zip tie it right before I put the cover back on to this wire bundle right here. But uh, so let me get it flipped over, and I'll actually show you that little crystal board that's in here. So let's turn the radio off. Get the microphone unplugged here. Switch off the AC power supply. Pop the antenna off camera up here slightly so here is the little board I'm talking about and it has two crystals now this is a halfway decent one I've seen these made by lots of companies over the years um, some of them have no adjustments on them. it's just two crystals and an empty socket like I say because you're removing one crystal out of the radio that crystal gets put down here in the middle socket usually on the board and then the wires run up to where the original crystal was. Um, this one has a trimmer capacitor, one for the upper channels and one for the lower channels. So once you do your transceiver alignment on the radio, get all your frequencies set and everything's you know dead nuts on on the radio. After you're done that, then what you do is is come back and adjust each of these to get these so they're the frequencies set properly. Also, so. Uh, otherwise, like I say, wasn't in bad shape, a little bit of, you know, questionable soldering. There was some remnants of some wires. I'm not sure what this might have had in it at some point in time. But uh, there was some stuff bodged in up here and all over the place. There were just You could see where it was a piece of wire there at one time, and somebody just clipped it off, and there was a little chunk left on it. So, you know, all that stuff was removed. But otherwise, radio is actually in good shape. Um, nice thing was, by somebody doing this channel mod down here, They've never cut any circuit traces on the uh, underside of the board for the PLL chip to add those extra channels. So the circuit board's still pretty much, you know, virgin condition, I guess you could say. So now it's a good working radio um, and ready to go for another, you know, 20, 30 years or whatever. So, like I say, if you ever run into weird problems, um, channels not working, and what, like I say, what he found. And I did verify the complaint was he would change bands, radio would be dead. I mean, channel indicator would be on, but you couldn't transmit. And all he'd do would be change the mode, just change mode. Didn't matter what mode you were in, when you'd change bands, radio wouldn't work. All you'd do would be flip the mode, mode switch over here, and it would start working. That's a good indicator that it was out of lock, and you're, a lot of times what that does is it's a, it's a, a voltage switching and that's enough to get the crystal to start oscillating. Because that's usually what's happened is a crit, the oscillator circuit's doing just that, not oscillating. And when you flip the mode switch, a lot of times that's enough to... It's almost like jump-starting the crystal or the oscillator circuit. So, like I say, things to check. If you're having that type of weird problem, check for modifications. I mean, that's the first thing you should always check anytime you buy any any used radio is to find out what kind of weird, oddball, and stupid modifications have been done to a radio. But, like I say, this clarifier modification, wow, I, I just, I kind of still scratch in my head, I don't know how it worked. <laughs> it was like it was half done, and shit was not run to the right place, and the ground wire was run to the steel chassis, and... Yeah, I'm still kind of perplexed at how it was even working at all, but uh, it did. Not well. <laughs> and then, like I say, the frequencies weren't stable because the wires were just teeny tiny little wires and way too much excess cable in there. So, got all that straightened out. And it's, it's PLL locks steady on all, so what, there's 120 channels now because there's four or three banks of 40 channels. So... All I need to do is reseal some of the cores with some fresh wax. Um, do just a little bit of zip tying, a couple last little things in here, get the covers put back on it, get it cleaned up, and be ready to head back to the customer then.